a region that appears as small dot on a world map, but it actually is a large strategic area. And the players in the tussle are the old, China versus the US and its allies. Leading the Pacific battle against China this time is America's quad partner, Australia. Both Australia and China have launched visits in the Pacific. Xi Jinping's top diplomat, the Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi, is on a 10-day tour to eight Pacific Island countries. China recently signed security pacts with the Solomon Islands, despite objections from Australia, US, Japan and even New Zealand. A country that has mostly maintained distance from the ongoing strategic wars. These countries fear it could give China a military presence in the region. Australia has also worked in recent years to revitalize its leadership position in the Pacific. The Australian government is in its biggest donor with the largest diplomatic footprint in the region. Australia's foreign minister in a trip to Fiji has warned Pacific countries against the consequences of signing and accepting security deals with Beijing. Fiji is the first Pacific Island country that joined U.S. President Joe Biden's Indo-Pacific Economic Framework during the Quad Summit in Japan earlier this week. It is aimed at bolstering Washington's presence in the Asia-Pacific. The West, especially the United States, has been irked by China's growing economic and geopolitical clout in the Pacific. Over the last two decades, Beijing has steadily built influence in the South Pacific. It's a region known for its pristine beaches, geographic and cultural diversity. 14 sovereign nations and 7 territories in the region span over 15% of the world's surface. Since World War II, the Pacific has largely enjoyed a benign status on the geopolitical stage. But it all changed with China's growing presence in the region. Since 2006, China's trade and diplomatic and commercial activity in the region has been steadily scaling up. Two-way trade with China has overtaken that of Australia since 2013. For the Solomon Islands, two-way trade with China now makes up to 46% of all trade. In the latest, China has announced its latest five-year deal to 10 island nations in the region. The deal pertains to extending security and economic cooperation. A leaked draft of the agreement claims to have lot on platter for these islands. Now the map on your screen show the shared ocean region between China, Australia and the 10 islands. Beijing is planning to approach. So what is China exactly offering to these countries? Let's understand. In its deal, Beijing is offering significant financial assistance, a free trade agreement and access to Beijing's lucrative market of 1.4 billion people. China is also mulling training the local police in these countries. But like all other deals, Chinese agreements too have a catch. And here's what Beijing is eyeing in return. Access to local cyber security, expansion of its political influence in the region, greater access to natural resources through, through marine mapping. Let us also understand the risk of China's rise. The first risk, which could also have a profound impact, is that China could be trying to use its leverage through diplomacy, debt, trade or establishing military bases in the region. A Chinese military base as little as 2,000 kilometers from Australia's coast would force a wedge between Australia and its strategic anchor the United States. Now the second risk, which has a higher probability of occurring, is that China and Chinese businesses through elite capture and corruption are rapidly undermining institutions of governance in countries in the region and misusing public resources for the benefit of a few individuals. But Beijing has also been struggling to maintain its momentum in the South Pacific. Traditional partners in the region are scrutinizing Chinese debt. They are wary of China's debt trap diplomacy, something that countries in South Asia like Sri Lanka and Pakistan have already fallen victim to. And caught between the battle of the world superpowers are 13 million people living in 14 sovereign nations and seven territories, 
spanning over 15% of the world's surface, an area that plays an extremely crucial role in global climate system, global economy, and now in global politics.